finish. And please take it away. Okay, so I'm very happy to present. So this is gonna be a, is a study that we did like during the first half of last year. And we have students from the University of China and also the or intermediate Chinese learners of Spanish. So this is a, like an experimental study. Uh, so first of all, I would like to go through some like previous studies. It's about the visual ads in language learning. So it's a very like, this is a lot like a long conviction in a literature for, uh, that we can use like video, uh, audiovisual materials or simply visual materials in language teaching. You can use it in teaching grammar or you can use it in teaching uh, uh, foreign culture. So it can date back at least to like the 60s of last century. And the reason suggested by some researchers is that if you have some like visuals and it provides contextual cues to your passage and to enhance the learner's comprehension of this passage, and the visuals serve as advanced organizers, activating relevant aspects of stored memory, and they're providing a framework within which the passage could be understood. So this is a basic reason that you suggest. And we find this kind of visual ads in different domains of language, teaching like listening comprehension, reading comprehension, vocabulary learning, and also like oral expression and writing. So the topic that I selected today is about the culture, teaching a culture. So this has also been tested in the literature, so it's by many by the Harry and uh, colleagues. So they did a theory of experiments in the 19th and also in the first 10 years of this century. So they have some very interesting experiments. So we can take a look at some. So for instance, in the 1992 paper, they compare the effects of using two different methods for teaching French culture to native English speaking students. So one of the group, they just read a passage and have no visual cues. And the other group, they read a passage and they have visual, they have the additional video clips, which explains the cultural aspects that are introduced in the written passage. And then they have to complete a quiz. And the finding is that the experiment group performed significantly better than the control group after they have the visual training. And later they did an another interesting experiment, which is a, a very similar, but you use a different experimental design. So they have a pre-test and a post-test. So in the pre-test, they just ask students to do the same, to read some passage. And in the post-test, they ask students to well, no longer read a passage, but also watch some uh, video clips, which were extracted from some, uh, it's, a French, it's a French TV program. And then they ask students to do exactly the same tasks and they find that, well, the students perform significantly better in the poster test after they watch the, the video clips. Okay, so this is uh, what we found in the literature. And recently, well, it's a previous study that I did with my colleagues. It's about, we can, well, can we really find some of, the, with some of the visual aids that we reported in literature? Because if you read the previous articles, you find that they use videos. But the thing is that videos have two parts. One is about just auditory parts. You have sounds, you have the everything about sounds. And then the other part is about images. So it's actually the visual part. So the question is that they have that kind of problem in neglecting the possibility that it could be just the auditory training instead of the visual training that might help their uh, the learning of the foreign culture. So that work, the previous work that we did we compared the performance of intermediate Chinese learner Spanish and in a series of cultural tasks using different cultural topics like uh, history, blah, blah, and a lot of things. And the, the experiment group, they were presented a series of video clips abstracted from a Spanish TV program. And the control group, they just to present the corresponding audios, just audios, no longer videos. So we have a, a very clear contrast, one using just videos, and the other using the audios abstracted from the videos, just audios. And we find that the performance of the experiment group was significantly much better than that of the control group. So this is the previous work that we did, but there are still some research gaps. So one thing is that it remains unclear whether the visual ads that we tested in the literature, well, not only in our work, but also in previous work by Heron, it's does it really felicitate the learning of the culture or the felicitates learning of the language in general. 
So if you see that, if it's for, it, 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 so if it benefits the learning of the language in general, it means that, well, it's not only about culture, but also about grammatic rules and also some more com complex scales. And so this is the first research gap. We want to test whether it's only the, it would benefit the learning of language. It's just the culture or it's some other grammatic aspects. And the second research gap is about, it is unclear whether this beneficial effect is only temporary or it would persist because if it's only temporary, then we use it. We well, we use it in classrooms and students get it, but then after that, they just forget this kind of things. And this is not what we want. We want it to persist at least for some while or for some weeks, and we can um, strengthen it. And the third research gap is about well, in the previous work, we selected different top the materials on different topics, so like history and sport and supports and also like uh, from the science and technology, different kind of topics for video material. But the thing is that we did not test whether the different topics would have an impact on the learning in general. So for instance, maybe some students, they are more interested in one of the topics and maybe some others not. So oh, actually this has also been reported in literature, but it's not very clear. So here comes the research questions. So the first research question is about uh, if we have the, the visual training, then besides auditory training, what we want to say is that did just visual training they would help the learning of a foreign culture. So we say that it's a development of intercultural com competence by the uh, intermediate Chinese uh, learners of Spanish. And in line with the previous studies, we hypothesis to that, yes, we can do that. So this is a basic hypothesis. And the second question is uh, exactly about um, the, uh, the effect of these, the beneficial effects of using visual materials. Would it persist in the learning of the, the Spanish culture after, even after they finish their Spanish course? And the third thing is about the, 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 the topic thing. So we have different topics and then we want to test if students, if one of the students is more interested in, the, in, in one, in a cultural topic, then would he perform much better in tasks related to this? So here are three research questions and also the hypothesis that we propose. And then we come to the experiment part. So here's the basic design of this experiment. So we have a total of like 40 participants and we have almost half of them females and then half of them males. And then they all had a, like a B1 level of Spanish and then the new only Spanish and English besides their mother tongue Mandarin. And then we created like a, a theory of uh, 30 audiovisual stimuli. And we have all of these things from a Spanish TV program. So we, well, this, this, this is to ensure that they have the well, authentic, like the Spanish pronunciation from the peninsula. And each lasting around 1.5 minutes and group on the five topics, history, tourism, support and art and science. And then the corresponding audios were extracted from the videos. So to ensure that we have the clear contrast, one is for the video and one is for the audio. And then each task, so here comes to the experiment task. I will give you an example later. So each task contains, the first thing is the stimuli. Uh, well, we have each task contains a stimulus. What we have, we, we can have it just for the audio or we can have it for a video. So here's a con the two, one for the control group and the other for the experiment group. And then we have two grammatic knowledge questions to test something about the grammar that you used in the, in, the, in the audio or in the video. And then about two cultural knowledge questions exactly about how they explain some cultural aspects in the video, like um, the architecture by Antonio Gaudi and also some uh, like Arabic cultural aspects in Spain, something like that. And we have a uh, experiment design, which consists of three tests. One is pre-test and then a post-test and a recall test. So here's the basic procedure. We first have a information collection to say that, well, you all have a B1 level in Spanish and you are not advanced learners or you are not just elementary learners. And then the heavy tuition, which means that I, we give them some trial tasks to help them to get familiar with the experiment environment. And then we come to the, uh, the pre-test, which contain like 10 tasks using just auditory stimuli, 
we just use audios in this case to say that, well, we don't have videos now and how would you perform? And then they proceed with the post test. So in the post test, we divide it into two groups. So the, 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 four, the 40 students, they were divided into two groups. One, the, group, the experiment group, 20 students, and the other, the control group, 20 students. So in the experiment group, the 20 students, they were presented 20 tasks. They use audio visual. So now they have the videos, no longer it's just the audios. But in the control group, they will still use the audios, just the audios. So we have 20 tasks as well, 10 tasks repeated from the pretest in order to say that whether they actually get some improvement. And then the other 10 new tasks to say that, well, we have new tasks now. Can you generalize what you learned from the videos or from the audios to the new tasks, not just repeated tasks? And then after that, in another day, we have a record test. It's just about the cultural knowledge that you learned from the views or audios. So it consists of 40 cultural knowledge questions. So here's the basic setting and then I proceed by, uh, so here's an example task. So for instance, we have an example task here. So here we have a, like a video and then, well, this is for the experiment group. So they have a video, but if you are in a, in a control group, you just have the audio. So they are explaining some interesting things like pastoric kings in Spain and something like that. And then they have two grammatic questions. So the first two, the, the, the first two questions exactly about the grammar. So it's in the, like uh, the verb conjugation or something like that. And also about synonyms or antonyms. It's about grammar. And then they have two another questions about the cultural aspects explained in the, in the stimulus. Okay, so they have a series of these kind of tasks and they complete that. So after that, we then obtain the, 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 the data from the experiment, and then we send the data to a generalized linear mixed model, and we have a, the dependent variable, which is a school, which means that they have correct or incorrect in their questions, that's the answer. And then we have group, two levels, one is for experiment group, and the other is a control group, and the third is a test, pre-test, post-test, and to record test, and topic, to five different topics and also their interests. So they are asked to, to, to reach their interests about one of the topics. And we use a five point linker scale. We say that, well, one is the least interested and the five is very, very interested. I'm crazy about this kind of topic. And finally, it's about questions. So two types of question, grammatic knowledge question and cultural knowledge question. That's two kinds of questions, as well as in their interactions. So, we have the two factors to interact together to say that if there's such a fact, and they are such as independent variables. And then we conducted the post hoc analysis using Poferroni adjustment. And we also have random facts, so subject and question number and their interactions. Okay, so this is a basic statistic model setting. And then we come to the result part. So, to, well, surprisingly, we find like three significant effects. One is about a group. So which means that there's a significant difference between the experiment group and just the control group. So that means there's gonna be a difference between using video and using just audio. And then the test, it's about pre-test, post-test, and the record test. There's still a difference. And then we also have an interaction, a two-way interaction. It's interaction between test and question. So I will show you the, some figures, which is more, Easy to capture the basic idea. So we have the pre-test and the post-test. So here's the horizontal line and pre-test to post-test and record test. And we also have the mean accuracy of scores that we achieve in all of the, the questions. So there are, here are diff two different questions, grammatic knowledge questions and cultural knowledge questions. We use different uh, figures. And then to see that here's the experiment group and here's the control group. So interestingly, what we find is that they achieve like almost the same, they, they, they had almost the same scores in the pretests. We didn't find any significant difference in the pretest, which means that, well, they had the intermediate level and they had almost the same competence in learning not only the grammar, but also the foreign culture. They had the same thing. But in the experimental group, in that case, we divided them into two groups. They, they, 
the experiment group and then the control group. In the post-test, what we did is that the experiment group watched videos and the control group just listening to the audios. And the thing is that we see that they get improved more. So the experiment group gets improved more, but just in cultural knowledge questions, but not in grammatic questions, not in grammar questions. So it's just, so that means that they actually improved after the watching the videos, but that kind of beneficial effects was only observed in cultural knowledge questions, but not in grammar knowledge questions. And in a recall test, the interesting thing is that, well, if they watch a video, then in a recall test, they perform significantly much better, even though there's a decline here. But the thing is that there's a contrast because they perform much better than the control group. But still, it's in, about the cultural knowledge question, but not about grammatic knowledge question. So this is a basic statistic re the results. But interestingly, what we find is that we didn't find any of uh, the main effects about like topic or topic interests. So this is very, well, I see that it's, it, it, this is very surprising because we have like a like conviction that if students are more interested in some topics, they will perform much better, they would pay attention and then they had better performance in such tasks. But just seeing that we didn't find those kind of things. So now we come to the interpretation of the results. So for the first question, does additional visual training favor the development of the intercultural competence of intermediate Chinese uh, learners of Spanish? The result is yes. Yes, we did find that. Yeah. If we use the, visual, uh, the videos and then they perform significantly much better than students just listening to the audios. And the second question is about does the beneficial effect of visual training persist in the learning of Spanish culture by the students? Yes. The thing is that we find the, in, the, in the recall test, the experiment group performed significantly much better than just the control group. This, yeah, because they watch the videos and the control group just listen to the audios. So this is what we observe. And the third question is that, well, is there any, what does the, what the interest in the topics really play a role in their learning of foreign culture? What we observe is that, no, we didn't find any such kind of effects of the topic or topic interests. But the thing is that this has been suggested. So we say that this challenges a traditional conviction. We find it in a lot of works in the original line. They believe that they are more interested than they would have a better performance. We suggested that, that a potential explanation could be that because the, the content conveyed by the stimuli is something new to students. So even they are interested, but that's still a little bit difficult for them to pay attention at that time. So let's say that if the some so if some students are very interested in in Messi and in football and in everything, but just seeing that if they have to first listen to the Spanish the, the language, it, well, it's a foreign language to them, and then they have to pay attention to the content. Actually, they cannot do that in the same way, and it could be difficult for them to do that. So this is a possible explanation, and we we are going to test it in the future because we say that, well, if we just present some more easier tasks or some easier content, some easier videos, then perhaps they would have more better results for the topic issue if they are more interested in this. And if it's easier and they can capture this, then we'll pay attention to this. Otherwise, they will be distracted because they are not interested at all. And then they were just lost in the interest. Okay, so this is the basic interpretation of the data. And then we propose some pedagogic implications and our future research. So first thing is that it's still the same that we have, we already have that practice. Well, it's been long in the, in the teaching of a foreign language that you use the, the visual materials in teaching a foreign language, not only culture, but also grammar. And the second thing is that it is unclear if we use different kind of visual materials like co-speech animation. So we just use animation. It's not a real life scenery. And also fictional scenarios, like we just play some roles and then we try to make some videos, but it's not actual life. And then the real life scenarios. So what we did here is the fictional scenarios because they are abstracted from the, the, the TV programs in from TV. It's a, it's a Spanish uh, the program. And then the third thing is that the stimuli that we use in our experiment, they were very short. So it's just like 1.5 minutes and it's very short. 
and we plan to test whether we can use some like long videos and whether this would well sometimes they would get tired and how well we, we don't know what would happen if we did that yes time okay. remaining four minutes yeah that's all already yeah thank you thank you if we can um we have uh out there any questions we have uh, extended amount of time we have about eight or eight minutes or so of question and answer uh if you have a question please under the reactions menu please raise your hand uh anna hi thank you can you hear me okay yes yeah. Good, thank you. I'm, um, I, I apologize for turning off my camera partway through. I was, I was so interested. I was going close you, yeah. to see, and um, that would be very scary for the presenter and other, other attendees. So that's why my camera was, was off. I'm sorry. But that's, this is fascinating. And um, so, so I, I'm interested that the, the cultural competence got so much better. And also, um, I'm reminded of the difference between, even as a native speaker, yes. um, crossing cultures. I was, I, Malala, mm -hmm. Malala's book, um, I, I read and listened to Malala's book, and then I saw the movie about, about um, Malala, and there was a totally different level of understanding. So, um, so I guess I guess this is um, not such a question, except it's fascinating that, and wonderful that you've got statistical results, and um, it's a very very impressive research. And how did you get started on this? On this research, how did you decide to start on this? How is audio? Yeah, because so so well yeah so in the last two years so it's like the pandemic and mm -hmm. then. We use more and more videos because ah. we use Zoom. It's not only well, especially in Spain, because we have that kind of control. We 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 are forbidden to leave, and we have to teach students using just Zoom or using different kind of video conference. And in that case, you know that these students, well, students tend to well, they don't open a video and they just play with themselves. And we want to attract more. They are like we want them to be more interested in the content that we are explaining. And then we use more videos to explain things. And then we just want to say that, well, if we use it in a class of English or using just using it in a class of Spanish to teach grammar, or we just use, we, we use it in a different class teaching other things like uh, the American culture or something else. And then we're, that, well, we want to say that, is there any difference between the two kind of classrooms? And yeah, we have some feedback from students because in teaching Spanish, it's like, yeah, because so, they are native speakers, and but they still want to learn some like uh, the the, uh, the reduction and also writing scales. Almost everything is about this. They are they never pay attention to that. Even we play some videos. That's the result that we get, and we see that whoa, that could mean that that does not benefit. That could not help them to 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 learn that kind of grammatic scales. And then, but if we play that video in like a, in a class about American culture. Or all Latin American culture, and then they oh, it's very interesting because I have never seen it before. And then they say that well, that could be helpful for them. And then we try, and when we decided to test whether really exists such a difference between the two kind of practice, right? Are there any are there any other questions, comments? Yes, Anna. I'm sorry, if anybody else wants to go, please go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll, then I'll go ahead. So please, please tell us wh where are you teaching and what are you teaching? So I'm, I work in the University of Pompeu Fabra, which is in Barcelona. Oh. And this is a Catalan city, you know that. So Catalan speakers, they, well, they are native Catalan and Spanish bilinguals, and they oh. have to learn the two languages. And yeah, so I teach, so I'm specialized in formal linguistics. Uh, formal semantics, but I also did uh, my research in language acquisition and language teaching. And so, yeah. 
I did like uh, introduction to linguistics and also semantics and pragmatics, this kind of course yeah, for <laughs> graduates and also for undergraduates. Yeah. It's mainly for undergraduates because they are pupils, they are still young and they, yeah, they never pay attention to the class when we use <laughs> video conference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have one comment uh, rather yeah. than a question, and that is, um, as a teacher, I'm I am extremely interested in what do the students take away on uh, what do they comprehend or what, what yeah. do they comprehend uh, of, right. of what we teach, and uh, I'm you know I always um, I've observed teachers who said yes. okay uh, now what did we study last week and nobody would right. raise their hand because they don't right. remember what they studied in the last class they don't remember it and the I'm giving a presentation this afternoon at this conference on the okay. very same, I think the very same area of, of okay. interest, but it's a pedagogical yeah. uh, presentation. And it and the things that two things that I'm going to be talking about that are not mentioned mm -hmm. are one is integration. When you provide a scaffolding, a structure so that yes. this information isn't just a, a separate information, but it is mm -hmm. a separate standalone activity but that is structured within a structure so that they can they can build and the second thing is we try to add emotion and we yeah. think that adding emotion that is it strengthens the neural pathways yeah. for the memory so that they will remember not only that particular thing yeah. but also every, many other things connected to that thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm yeah. wondering if you might, uh, if you'd be interested in also looking at those two things in yeah. your future research. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think emotions. I would say, yeah, it's like they're also important for the learning of language, especially to well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. Not at all. Are there any other questions, Anna? You're free to ask another question if you'd like. Yeah. Not um, you have sorry, go ahead, Anna. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you to the presenter. This was wonderful. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> yeah. If not, then um, I'd like to give uh 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 Yuan a yes. chance to conclude any con any conclusions or um any last comments that you'd like to make. No, I don't think yet. It's just about use of these things and the different effects on. Okay, very good. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going mm -hmm. to uh, turn off the recording.